Hi there and welcome to our first video on some exam questions related to atomic structure. So our first exam question states, the diagrams represent three atoms X, Y and Z. Which two of the atoms are found from the same element? So if we have a look now, we need to know which one is a neutron, which one is a proton and which one is an electron. And the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. So that means the number on the outside crosses must be the same as the circles inside. So if we have a look at this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means we, we should have seven protons. And all of these are seven, so we can keep this to one side. This one over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, protons. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six electrons, six protons. So which number are the same? It's the black one and the cross. So that means the top number is the number of protons and the bottom number is the number of electrons. Now, remember isotopes have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. So they must have the same number of protons so in this case, this one and this one have the same number of protons and this one and this one have a different number of neutrons. So that must mean that which two atoms are isotopes of the same element, it's going to be Y and Z. And to explain your answer, there's the same number of protons but uh, different number of neutrons okay and that will get you two marks next question now in the early part of the 20th century some scientists investigated the paths taken by positively positively charged alpha particles into and out of a very thin piece of gold foil the diagram shows the paths of three alpha particles so over here these are the three particles a b and c and this is a gold nucleus as you can see some pass straight through some are deflected some are repelled now the question asks us to explain the different paths a b and c of the alpha particles to gain full marks in this question you should write your ideas in good english put them into a sensible order and use the correct scientific words so it's only worth three marks so you don't need to explain you just need to put your point in what's happening in a what's happening in b and what's happening in c so in a the alpha particles are going straight through so the alpha particles travel straight through in b what happens the alpha particles are deflected so the alpha particles are deflected and see what's happening the alpha particle has been repelled so the alpha particle has been repelled okay and that will get you three marks okay next question now the nuclei of some isotopes are radioactive which of the following statements could apply to a radioactive nucleus. Take one box. So the nucleus will emit an electron, the nucleus will emit light, the nucleus will emit a neutron, or the nucleus will emit a sound. So remember when a radioactive nucleus, it's a nucleus which is unstable um, and it will release alpha, beta, gamma, or neutrons. So the nucleus will emit a neutron okay and that will get you one mark next question potassium 40 is a radioactive isotope present in foods such as bananas 
The following equation shows how potassium-40 will decay into calcium-40, give one similarity and one difference between the nuclei of potassium-40 and calcium-40. So if you have a look now, similarity, you can clearly see that both of them have the same mass numbers. So both have the same mass numbers and over here this one is 19 this one is 20 because of beta decay and so the difference is that there is a different atomic number there so different atomic number okay and that will get you two marks Next question. The activity of a sample of potassium-40 is measured three times. The measurements are given below. 4960 becquerels, 4956 becquerels, and 4889 becquerels. Which of the following statements explains why the readings are different? Tick one box. Radioactive decay is constant. Radioactive decay is hazardous. Or radioactive decay is random. The correct answer to this is that radioactive decay is random. And that would get you one mark. The figure below shows how the activity of a sample of potassium-40 changes over time. Use the figure above to determine the half-life of potassium-40. So if we have a look now, we need to work out the intervals this graph is going up in. And you should be able to spot that each of the small squares are going up in 40s. So this one over here would be 1080. So 1080. Now remember a half life is the time it takes for it to half. So the mass of the sample to half. So half of 1080 is going to be 540. And to find that 400, 440, 480, 520, it's going to be around there. And if we draw a line down, it's going to be around there. And if you would see, the bottom is going up in 0.2s, so that means it's going to be around 1.3 billion years, okay? And because it's the time taken for the sample to half, okay? And that will get you two marks. Next question. When food is eaten, some of the radiation the food emits is detectable outside the body. What type of radiation would not be detectable outside the body? So the correct answer to this is gamma. Gamma is a radioactive wave and it can travel in four distances because it has a large penetration. And that will get you one mark. Next question. Alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays are a type of nuclear radiation. Describe the structure of an alpha particle. So an alpha particle is made up of two protons and two neutrons. Okay, it's the same as the nucleus of a helium atom. And that will get you one mark. Nuclear radiation can change atoms into ions by the pro a process of ionization. Which type of nuclear ra radiation is least ionizing? So remember, alpha particles are the most ionizing. Beta particles are medium ionization. Gamma rays are the least ionizing. So it's the ability to make ions. Okay, and that will get you one mark. Next question, what happens to the structure of an atom when the atom is ionized? So the atom, so the atom gains or loses electrons. And that's all you need to say for one mark. When it's ionized, it loses or gains electrons. Okay. Next question. P 
People working with sources of nuclear radiation risk damaging their health. State one precaution these people should take to reduce the risk to their health. So there's loads. You could say that wear safety goggles, wear gloves. So wear gloves. Um, wear. So wear safety equipment. Keep um. Keep a safe distance apart. So you could say keep a safe distance apart. And wear safety equipment, you could say wear goggles to be specific. Okay, and that will get you one mark for any of them. Next question. The figure below is a diagram of an alpha particle and a helium atom. What is the approximate size of an alpha atom? So the approximate size of a, a sorry, helium atom is going to be 1 times 10 to the power of 10. Remember, the approximate size of a nucleus is around 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. Okay. A helium atom, atom is much larger than an alpha particle. Give one other difference between a helium atom and an alpha particle. So you could say that a helium atom contains electrons. So a helium atom contains electrons. Okay, and that will get you one mark. Next question. What is the ato atomic number of the helium atom in the figure above? So we have this one over here, helium atom. So if we were to just write this, so we have helium. Remember the bottom number is the number of, uh, is the atomic number number of protons. It has two. And the top number will be the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So in this case, four. What does the question ask you? What is the atomic number of the helium atom? Well, the atomic number is going to be the bottom number. So it's going to be two. Okay, so we can take two for one mark. Okay, final question now. What is the charge of the helium atom in the figure above? Explain your answer. So over here, it has two electrons in its outer shell. So I'm just going to draw it here. So we have a helium atom, just like that. And we have two electrons in its outer shell. So the charge of the helium atom is going to be two plus. And the reason for this is because helium needs to lose two electrons to gain a full outer shell. So the charge is going to be two plus because Helium needs to lose two electrons. Okay, and you can see that uh, from there. So it has a charge of two plus because it has two electrons in its outer shell. It has two protons, so the number of electrons and protons will cancel out to make the overall atom neutral okay and that is it for this video thanks for watching i hope you liked it and one last thing please subscribe hit the like button and the notification bell